That bastard! What is it? I'm pretty sure we can use these tunnels to make our way back to Sector 7. The sewers under Sector 6 and 7 should be connected. If you get in trouble, just follow the stench. Another one of those lessons? An avalanche thing, actually. We use them to move around the Undercity. In emergencies. Sure we're not lost? Positive. There should be a big waterway just up ahead. Let's find that first. Lead the way. In the original game, I ran into a little bit of an issue, a mental issue with this anyway, trying to reconcile the idea that the city of Midgar is not really that old with what we were seeing or the kind of themes it was trying to present. Now, I'm not quite sure how long the city of Midgar has it existed, and I do know that it has not yet been finished construction. They're not finished building it yet. So... It wasn't all that long ago, certainly within the, the lifetime of the current president of the company, who's maybe in his 50s or so, that the city of Midgar has been built maybe within the last 20 years or so. Now, I would normally think that something like this, oh, well, that city's been up there for 100 years or something like that, oppressing people generation after generation, but no, the city is actually fairly new. But then you go into places like this, or in the original game, places like the train graveyard or whatever, and it gives you the impression that the city itself is far older. Old enough for a lot of junk like that to accumulate. And wandering through the sewers, now the sewers weren't a very big part in the original game, but they are in this one. And the sewers seem much older, and they seem almost abandoned. I mean, they are functioning a little bit here. But a lot of it seems like it's just empty. So the impression that I have is that the city of Midgar, and I'm pretty sure this is actually the truth, but the city of Midgar is... There, were, there was a city or a collection of towns that have been around for a long time. And then Shinra moved in and then built their plate and that fucked everything up. Now, I know everything I'm saying here is pretty obvious, but it's kind of like a bringing up one of the problems that I have with this game. Overall, I think this is a pretty good game. Perhaps the best, well, maybe not the best they could have done with the remake, but they did a pretty good job. But when you have a change in sort of gameplay styles into this more open world style of game, I expect a few things to be set up differently. Now in the original game, I expect that there not really is a whole lot of information about the sort of the background lore of everything. Like okay, so you have the city of Midgar, really only the first few hours of the game take place there. All you really need to know is the situation, some of the characters, all that kind of stuff. You don't need a whole lot of information about the background of the world. You just need the base information. Okay, Shinra built this blade up there. They're oppressing the poor people, all of that. But when you start having an open world game, or a quasi-open world game like we're looking at with the remake here, I expect a little bit more. In the original game, or any kind of traditional Japanese role-playing game, it's a little hard to tuck information away along in the periphery. You're going to perhaps have a dialogue with random NPCs that'll go and mention something like, Finra moved into this town 40 years ago and built the plate. That conversation doesn't happen in the original game, but something like that would happen. Random bits of information just tossed around. In open world games, and I'm pretty much going to be using uh, the Elder Scrolls or Fallout, the more recent games in the series at least, or maybe The Witcher, Witcher 3 anyway. The way that those guy games sort of brought that kind of information conveyance along was to have 
say, uh, books that your characters stumble across, then you can read a snippet from the book detailing some history. Uh, the Dragon Age series has probably done this better than anybody else. Having books out and about where you just can pick up information that's certainly not necessary for you to complete the game or understand the story. But definitely flesh out the backstory quite a bit. So instead of just taking place in this environment, there is a backstory and there is a fairly rich backstory. But since it's unknown, I mean, uh, unnecessary, a majority of players are probably never going to encounter it. But for the people who do go out of their way to find that information, it can add some nice world building and uh, give you a better appreciation of everything that's going on in the game or what the developers have gone through to create it, fleshed out the world, all of that. That being said, in this game, the Final Fantasy VII Remake, I haven't really came across that kind of thing. All of the information about the backstory seems to be conveyed in the cutscenes between your characters. So for the most part, the only things you're going to learn about, okay, what Tifa knows, what Aerith knows, what Barrett knows, what random Shinra soldier shouts at you for when you try walking through a door. And that kind of limits what you can get away with conveying. It's really dark. I'm sure we'll be fine. Come on. Hey, Cloud. Assuming Corneo was telling us the truth, what do you think Shinra's really up to? I mean, they've got to have an endgame. But I can't imagine what it is. Destroying a whole chunk of the city just to get back at us doesn't make any kind of sense. Yeah, I can't imagine any way they could profit from it. It's gonna cost them a fortune to rebuild. Corneo's lying. He's gotta be. Guys like him do it all the time out of habit. That's a power generator, all right. Wow, talk about ancient. It's an antique. Older than the Mako reactors, even. It'd be a miracle if it still works. up tight but not if we use the skeleton cage made huh does this mean it's in the water we'll see the reason why going back to what I was previously saying the reason why there is a limit to the amount of information that you can convey by your main characters or any other character during the dialogue scenes is because it, it kind of drags a story down to have a character just stop and start relaying inf information by exposition. It can get really boring for a reader, player, viewer, whatever. If they have to sit there for long bouts of just information being passed along to the player, it can either take the form of like an info dump, like what you saw kind of in the beginning of Final Fantasy XII, or scenes like, I don't know, over in the Xenosaga series where there are exceptionally long cutscenes where characters are just rattling off information in a lot of cases that can really drag down a game and make it kind of boring. The, um,. Metal Gear Solid 4 is another game that's kind of infamous for this, with extremely long cutscenes that are just dragging out and out, and they gotta be long because there's a lot of information that they gotta convey, but it doesn't really suit the player that well to have to put the controller down and just listen to these characters talk during all the time. So that's perhaps the reason why 
in this game, you're not seeing a lot of information about the background of this world that we're living in. Even though there's clearly somebody, somebody I'm sure in a lore book somewhere, or like a story bible or something, came up with everything, wrote it down, the details and all that kind of stuff. There isn't really a good way for them to convey this information to the player, unless they were going to do things like, I don't know, finding, finding tomes or something written about. Because you don't want to have Tifa just stop for 15 minutes and talk about the history of the sewers here. Plus, honestly, technological limitations would probably hold this up. I mean, the... Oh, look, there's something we can go down here and get later. This game is like a 100 gigabyte game on the PlayStation 4. A lot of information in this, so adding even more dialogue would probably bloat the size of the game install even larger. And we're not really at a place technologically where that's practical, at least not on console. On PCs, I can imagine it, but if you look at like, what is it, like Battlefield or something like that, or Call of Duty, which has a several hundred gigabyte install, it, eh, let's, let's back this up a little bit. We're going a little far with it. It's perhaps also a different uh, mentality of game design between Eastern and Western game development studios. The Western game studios perhaps approaching the entire thing from more of like a Dungeons and Dragons base might be more willing to have backstory just sort of written down because I mean those D&D &D manuals have like monster information and codex and all that kind of stuff. Expecting a player, if they want to find out more, to go and look it up on their own, rather than just the base concept of what they're supposed to be doing. Whereas Eastern RPGs, I don't really know where they got their start. But it seems to be a little bit more, like, focused on what's going on in the here and now, rather than expecting the player to go and seek out information on their own. I did bring up Xenosaga earlier, and Xenosaga is actually kind of a weird, weird counterexample to what I was saying, where they actually went and put in some like side information in a codex that you, you were actually expected to go and reference over and over again, which was definitely, in my opinion, the wrong way to go for that game, because they just didn't provide enough context in any particular cutscene, then something would happen, and then you would expect you'd be expected to go and look up what the hell it is you just saw. And then like, oh, okay, so that's what was going on. It's it's a hard balance, and I'm not quite sure how to do it myself, and I guess neither are the developers of this game. Wait a minute. I know this place. Sector seven should be just on the other side of this waterway. So this is where Sector Six ends. And where Sector 7 begins. Once we cross over, we can start looking for a way back to the surface. That'd be harder than you think. Let's just try to make our way down this tunnel. See if we can't use those gates to clear a path. We can do this. We'll figure it out. Yeah, for sure. I think this game also has odd pacing issues. The original story was built around the idea of it pretty much being as long as it was. You get the information about Don Corneo, you get dropped into the sewers. The sewers, you have a boss battle, and then you move move out of the sewers within a couple of minutes after the boss battle. It's not a long period of time. You've got to get back to Sector 7 in order to attempt, at least, to stop the collapsing of the plate. And that's like an intense situation that you don't really want to be taking a lot of time, because... There's only so long tension can be maintained for a viewer, reader, player, whatever. You want to sort of have something happen and you want to start building up tension gradually until you can reach a point where you can release that tension. Not necessarily at the end of the story or at the end of the game, at the climax, but you want to have like peaks and troughs of tension in any story. So in the original game, you hear about the collapse of the plate. Then at that point, tension starts building. And then you've got to navigate your way to Sector 7, where when you climb the plate, 
That's when the tension reaches its peak, and then the situation resolves. Resolves in a very negative way, to be certain. Spoiler alert, by the way. But it does resolve. You're dead. And that doesn't really take all that much time, because tension really can't be sustained for an extended period of time. It ends up getting boring, the player ends up getting distracted, sort of forgets about what they're supposed to be experiencing in a way. And that's what's happening here. I know that they had to extend the game, because this 10 hour or 5, five to 10 hour portion of the game is being extended out to a 40 hour game, so existing dungeons had to be expanded to add in all of the extra story content and gameplay content. But in certain situations, like this one, it does kind of deflate the energy of the game. Because, okay, we gotta get to Sector 7. Sector 7's gonna freaking get crushed. We gotta move. Okay. Half an hour later. We gotta move. Half an hour later. Keep moving. Uh, it's a bit of an exaggeration. It's perhaps... Maybe I should have said 10 minutes instead of a half an hour. But you get my point, though, I hope. We have been stuck in the sewers for a long time, slashing at these crab monsters, and just like, okay, get past that fight. We gotta move, though. Well, you move past it, and there's another long section where you gotta keep navigating around in the sewers. This section of the sewer, by the way, looks a lot newer than the other section. Perhaps it was built later to facilitate the expanding city. Matt, I'm getting distracted. But anyway, the longer it takes to get through these parts, and spoiler alert, there is another fairly long dungeon that takes place after this one, which drags the scene out even longer. Maybe what they should have done was cut both this one and the train graveyard dungeons in half. So it takes half as much time to get through, and it won't be quite the ordeal to have a player moving their way through it. <laughs> Walking backwards. Hey, Materia. This game, I guess, maybe also has a little bit of a problem when it comes to, like, the game feels like you're always going to be getting close to the end. So I didn't find myself really in the need to buy any materia. Now there are materia shops, but I seem to be finding all the materia that I really need just lying about. Now there was materia out and about on the ground in the original game, but the original game was longer than this. And I did need to buy some materia. Not, not all the materia I needed, but I did need to buy some of it. But, I mean, I was finding materia here today. It's like, oh, well, another fire materia. Another poison materia. And I don't need that. And it just sits in the inventory forever. I'm not going to bother selling it. Because, honestly, I don't even need the money either. The resource grind. And the leveling grind. Is greatly reduced in this game. And not that I'm a huge fan of grinds, but... I don't, I don't know. Maybe they had the wrong balance. Not to say the original game had the right balance either. But, you know. Teach their own. This episode is going to end up being very long, so I'm going to start speeding up the non-dialogue scenes, because... Honestly, I don't have that much to say. And I don't think anybody really wants to hear me talking for 45 freaking minutes. Honestly, any video longer than 10 minutes is probably not going to get seen. All right. Now we should be able to get across. I'll go first, okay? Stop thinking about what Corneo said. I know. Me too. It's gotta be a trick. There's no way they'd go that far. But... But what if Corneo really was telling the truth? 
We have to get there in time to stop it. We have to. Right. <sighs> Aerith, what are you not telling me? Huh? Uh... Guys, come on. We gotta keep moving. Coming! I'll go first. Mm. Turn. On my way. Here we go. least I could do. Hear that, Cloud? <laughs> Come on. Still thinking about the plate? Yeah. The future isn't set in stone. That's what I always tell myself. Yeah. I hope you're right. How about this then? Think of something fun. After saving Sector 7, you're gonna... I'm gonna... Go shopping. Topside. I'll buy stuff for the bar, decorations, coasters. Can I come? You'd better. Then it's a date. <laughs> <laughs> Cloud can carry all our stuff. He'll be our pack chocobo. <laughs> what was that about me? Nothing. Sorry about that. No need to be. I get what they're doing here. They want to sort of change the character dynamic. Because in the original game, it was pretty clear that like Cloud was supposed to be the hero of the story. And things don't get going good until Cloud shows up to make him right. And it's only like much later on in the game that you have any scenes that take place without the presence of Cloud. So, Cloud's the hero, Cloud makes everything right. Things are different now, especially in the relationship that characters would have with female characters. A strong push going in the direction of not making them come across as helpless or depending on some dude to come along and save them or whatever. So what they're doing here, and it was pretty clear from the moment that that first scene happened, that they're, what they're doing is they're having all three of these characters sort of come across like they're codependent on each other for survival. Cloud saves Tifa, Tifa saves Cloud, Tifa saves Aerith, Aerith saves Cloud, Cloud saves Aerith, Aerith Claire saves Tifa. A sort of like round robin of that kind of shit is going on here in order to give the impression that these characters are in a sense all equal to each other. I get why that's happening, although I do feel like it is a little bit of a... Dude, that space is not that narrow. You could have fit through there. It does kind of screw with the sort of perspective that we're supposed to be getting that Cloud is the hero of the story. It's also rather predictable, and it's a little strange that I'm complaining about something being predictable in a remake, 
but there are changes to the story. And as soon as I saw the first instance of one character sort of saving another, I realized what was happening. And it's like, okay, well, we're going to have... The next one's going to be coming in five minutes. Then the next instance of this is happening five minutes after that. And I don't want to have the feeling that I know what's going to be happening when I haven't seen it yet. Guys, check it out. Seventh Heaven's water tank has something similar. I'm betting we can use this to control the sewage level. Hey, Cloud. You want to give it a try? This ought to drain the water. Right? No luck? Must be busted. A red light indicates a blockage, apparently. We can use the hand pump to clear the blockage. Sounds about right. I remember having to do this at the bar before. All right. I'll... Aerith, you mind giving me a hand? Cloud, you stay put. Keep an eye out for more red lights. Wait, I'm not sure... Trust me, this is the best way to handle it. We'll be back soon. Maybe this is a little different from the one at the bar. More... industrial? This took me an embarrassing amount of time to figure out how to do, so let's just fast forward through it. All right, I think that did it. Wonderful. Okay, let's head back. Cloud's probably getting worried. Nicely done. We make a great team. Go team! Again, we had another incident of them trying to draw attention away from Cloud being the sole heroic individual of the group, where it didn't really matter. It was this tiny little scene, so it was sort of like a wasted effort in that sense. But they had Cloud stay behind and Tifa and Aerith went over to activate that uh, gate or hump thing. Comes across as a little bit weird because they didn't really do much of it all. But they did, um... They didn't really do much at all, but they did separate from Cloud and just sort of left him behind. And it didn't really make any sense that he wasn't there. Except for the fact that they just wanted to have them leave him behind for a couple of minutes. They were going to do something like that, the scene really should have been longer. Perhaps even had them get into a fight without him being around. Cloud! <laughs> Looks like they're hungry for more. We're not delicious! Not even a little bit! Get going! No! Okay! You too! But there's too many of them! Not for me. Uh, hurry! Last warning! Back off or die! Cloud! Come on! It'll be fine! We've 
got a bodyguard, don't forget. Mine. <sighs> right? Ghosts aren't my thing. <sighs> You're just being modest. After you. Mind letting me go then? <laughs> mm.